Hello, welcome to your next video on angles. Had to squeeze a little N in there, so sorry about that. The video here is about angles, A-N-G-L-E-S, unit 3.1. This is a reflection on geometry as we begin our uh, geometry unit. So this is, should be all review to you, but let's go through a few things. So I have a list of things I need to do. I'm going to start with just this first one, how to name an angle. Now, if you're looking at angle 1 here, I could say that that is angle 1. So that's definitely one way to say it, angle 1. That's that angle right there. There is another way to write it. It's the three-letter system. And I don't know if you can really see that, but do you see that little B right there? Um, let me use my little pointer here. Oh, it's the lightsaber again. So there, right there at the tip of my lightsaber is the letter B. I could hardly squeeze that in the way I drew it, but I had to get it in there. So then, here is your A here is your B and here is your C. If I want to talk about angle 1 in a different way, I can walk this path and call it C, A, B, C. So that's another way to call angle 1, angle A, B, C. I didn't have to walk in that direction, I could go from the C to the B to the A also, and I could call it angle C, B, A, as long as B is in the middle. The B is the vertex, that's the key point, that's the middle. So there's just a couple ways of naming an angle. Now there's another vocabulary word, and you can feel free to draw this picture and take little notes on this if you'd like, and that is corresponding. Corresponding angles are another, another um, way to talk about angles. So let me point out a few um, corresponding angles. I'm going to do this with, with uh, let's go with blue. So corresponding angles would be when you have two parallel lines like you do here, this line right there and this line right there. If you picked up these four on the bottom and place them on top of the four on the top, corresponding would be the angles that fall on top of each other. So corresponding angles would be like angle 6 and angle 2. So I'll abbreviate because I'm going to run out of space here. This is going to be a lot of information on the slide. Corresponding, angle 1 and angle 5. If I picked it up, 6 would go on top of 2. Angle 6 and angle 2. Angle 8 and 4 go together, and 7 and 3 go together. What's important about corresponding angles that you should know is a theorem that they have the same measure. So if I wrote M angle 1, that would be equal to M angle 5. That means the little m stands for measurement of the angle, so if I got out a protractor and measured angle 1 to be 110 degrees, angle 5 would also correspondingly be 110 degrees. Consecutive interior. Consecutive interior goes for um, interior, so erasing a little bit of this work here. Interior means between the um, parallel lines. So you see these little arrows right there? That is an indicator that the lines are parallel. So interior means inside the parallel lines. So that would be 3, 4, and 5, 6. Now consecutive interior are on the same side. So 4 and 6 would be consecutive interior. These two right there. So I'm going to write that angle 4 and 6, those are consecutive interior, and 3 and 5 also. Angle 3 and, that's an and symbol, angle 5. Alternate interior are interior again, the 3, 4, 5, 6, but alternating sides of this, we call this a transversal. 3 and 6, 3 and 6 are alternating interior, and 5 and 4 are also alternating interior. So those go with alternating interior. Supplementary, I'm going to draw a little arrow over here. Supplementary means that the two angles will add to 180 degrees. Now 180 degrees you should know is like a line. So if I had two angles like this, angle 1 and angle 2, this angle right here total is going to be 180 degrees. So looking at my picture, angle 6 and angle 8 fit that criteria because they fall on this line. So, measure of angle 6 plus measure of angle 8 will also have to equal 180 degrees. That's supplementary. Um, that's not just 6 and 8, it's like 5 and 6. They're all on a line, so they're 180 degrees. 5 and 7, 7 and 8 
1 and 3, 1 and 2, 2 and 4, etc. So that's supplementary. The key to that is totaling 180 degrees. Now let me do a little erasing here so I can highlight then the vertical. Vertical is tricky for students. Vertical, here's a little explanation on vertical. Two lines cross, it's the ones across from each other. So it's these two right here in the picture that I drew little arcs. Those one, then that one. So on this case, the vertical angles above are like 8 and 5. There's a crossing of two lines here, and those are across from each other. So angle 5 and angle 8. Angle 6 and angle 7 are also vertical. And then 1 and 4, 2 and 3. 1 and 4, 2 and 3. Those are all vertical angles. And then right angles. There are no right angles on this, but if you had a picture, most of you know that. This is what a right angle would look like, but it's always indicated with a little box. And you know for right angles that the two angles, if there's two of them, must add to 90 degrees. In this case, there's only one, but if I drew a little line here, then angle 1 and angle 2 would add to 90 degrees. All of this information on this slide, it, it, I know it took a long time to go through this slide, but this is the kind of things you're going to be setting up. Next example here, um, same picture. Now I've got some facts. The measure of angle 1 is 4x, so I'm going to kind of circle that in red, and measure of angle 1, that one right there is 4x. And then in blue, I'm going to highlight the second one. Uh, measure of angle 4. Now you have to know these relationships. From the last slide, they were vertical angles. And if I forgot to mention it, vertical angles have the same measure. So I know that these two are vertical because they're a crossroads, a crossing here, and they're across from each other. So I know that the measure of angle 1 must equal the measure of angle 4. How do I know that? Because they're vertical, and vertical angles are congruent. That's in geometry called the vertical angle theorem. So because measure of angle 1 is 4x, and the measure of angle 4 is 3x plus 150, I can then find these measurements of the angles by doing a little algebra. So now you just have to do a little algebra work. Subtract 3x, subtract 3x, cancel. You get 150 equals 4x minus 3x is 1x. Divide by 1, you just get x equals 150. That's what x is, 150. So if I needed to find the measurements of these angles, I would then take 150 and I would substitute it in for x in each of these problems to figure out the measurement of the angle. Now, I just made this problem up on the fly, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, because if you put x in for 150 in for x, 4 times 150, that's 600. These angles are not 600 degrees, so it's a bad example, but if this was not 150, if it was 15, for example, then I would take 15 and plug it in for 4, 4 times 15 is 20, carry the 2, 4. It would be a 60 degree angle, and that was what angle 1 is, so that would be the measurement of angle 1, and likewise I'd plug it in for the x in the other one to get the measure of angle 4. So that's your example 1. Here comes example 2. Similar part. I, I like to always look at the two angles I'm looking for, 2 and 4. So let's just highlight one of them in red, number 2, number 2. And let's go to blue for number 4, number 4. Well, these aren't vertical angles because they're not across from each other in the crossroads. But I do see that they fall on this line, and I know lines are supplementary. That means they must total 180 degrees. Well, so that, that would be the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 4 equal 180. Substitute in. Measure of angle 2 is 3x plus 4. Measure of angle 4, addition sign, 7x plus 6. That equals 180. 7x and 3x is 10x. 4 and 6 is 10. Solve by subtracting 10 from both sides. You get 10x equals 170, divide by 10, you get x equals 17. Now, the question here may ask you to find x. If it does, you're done. But if it actually asks you to find the measurement of angle 2, you're not done. You go back to your original problem, 3 times x plus 4, and you substitute in 17. 
that would be 3 times 7 is 21, carry the 2, that would be 3, 4, 5, 51, plus 4 is 55 degrees. And then you could likewise figure out the measure of angle 4 by plugging it in or subtracting 180 from 55. So those are some samples. There are different kinds of problems on your worksheet, and they do get a little bit more complicated, but this is the basic of it. You have all the information. Hopefully you can apply it. Thanks for listening.